I'm going to be doing a series of videos on how to create a component similar to what we see in this image file. So it's going to be wall based. I want it to fit over a window, which if it was always going to be attached to this window, I could build it into the window family itself. But I want something more flexible. I want to be able to use it in other places. So we're going to start by using the window template. So we'll just go ahead and select that as our starting point. And the reason I'm going to use the window template is because I can kind of tie it to the size of the window easier so that it automatically sizes the the grill basically based on the size of the window. So that's how we're going to start. And I'm going to go to one of my elevations and I'm going to add an additional reference plane because I want it to always be centered over the window. So let's go ahead and add that. And it needs to be equal. So part of the benefit of using the window template is that it's already got my height and width and sill height established for me. So that kind of takes some of the work out of this. And we're going to proceed from here by adding an additional reference plane. So let's go back to the reference level. And we'll want this to be on the exterior side, so I'm going to add a reference plane that is going to control the depth of this. And we want to make sure that it's always going to be controlled from the face of the wall. So if there's not a reference plane on here already, so we'll check, then I'm going to need to add one. So we'll use our tab key, and I really don't want it to use the face of the wall per se, so we're going to add a reference plane that is tied to the face of the wall. So I'm going to pick and we're going to lock it. And we want to test and make sure that that stays attached. So now before I flex this wall family, I am going to dimension this and I'm going to lock it because I'm going to assume it's always going to be a stock um, depth when it's not going to be flexible. So we'll go ahead and dimension it. And again, like I said, use your tab key to get to that reference plane and I'm going to escape twice and we'll set this value so we'll say it's always going to be six inches out from the wall so whatever it would be that's what you would lock this at and then we're going to want to flex the wall itself so we're going to create a new wall style so we're just going to duplicate this one and I'm going to change the thickness because really this is just to test and make sure that everything's flexing as it should so you can see that my wall got bigger and this remained where it's supposed to. So that's the first part we're going to do. Let's go ahead and do a save as and then I will go on to video number two. Okay this is part two and for those of you that are new to Revit and watching this video please be aware that when you save this somewhere make sure that you save it into a custom content folder. Do not put it in the Imperial Library. Also, Revit is not backwards compatible, so we want to make sure that we make this in the lowest release that we have to use it in. So in this example, I'm using Revit 2013, which means I can only use this family in 2013 or forward. So just something to keep in mind. All right, so we need to add a few more reference planes. So what I'm going to do, let me delete these here is I'm going to add some reference planes that it's going to control the size of that you know square that we have in the center so I'm going to create my reference planes and since these are not going to be parametric I want to you know put it in the right location so we'll say this square is going to be six inches wide um, overall so I'm just going to mirror this And since I didn't select the item first, that makes it easier actually to select it first. And then select your mirror tool. Okay, and then I'm going to mirror both of these off the center. And then I'm going to dimension them and lock them. So we'll do the equality constraint first and then the overall and lock it and same thing this direction okay, 
and I'm going to change my units. Anytime I work with a family that's mostly inch based, I change my units. It won't affect anything once it's taken into the project. It'll assume the, the units of the project. Just makes it a little bit easier for me to deal with. So since these are locked on the center and the center is a fixed point, I really don't need to flex anything yet. So let's go ahead and do another save. And I need to add some additional reference planes for how far outside of the window I want you know, this cross to extend. So let's go ahead and add additional reference planes. And this is probably going to be um, parametric, mostly because all windows don't have the same size of trim. So I want to be able to adjust it for all situations. So we'll go ahead and add, you know, whatever size we want it to be. Oops, not half an inch, six inches. And then again, I'm just going to mirror these because it makes it easier. And same thing this way. And then we're going to dimension all of these and assign a parameter. So we'll do that next. And I'll go ahead and dimension all of them and assign the parameter all at once. So now that I've got all those dimensioned, I'm going to hold down my control key and select all of these dimensions and add a parameter. Um, we'll call it, I don't know, grill offset. And type or instance based is kind of your call. Um, instance is obviously going to be more flexible but type might make more sense if we're associating it to a specific window size. So I'll leave mine at type. And then we do want to flex this. So let's go in here and let's change this to some other value. Okay, so it's flexing as it should. So let's go ahead and stop here so that you guys can practice this part on your own and then we'll pick up with video number three. Okay, this is part three, so we'll continue from where we left off. I'm going to do a couple more things. We are going to give this reference plane a name, and that just makes it so that I can pick it from a list when I go to set my work plane. So we'll call it um, center, top to bottom. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to add a subcategory. So if we go to the Manage tab, and object styles. Under windows I'm going to add a new subcategory for the grill. And it's not required that you do this but it does give us more control and more flexibility when this project or when this family is taken into a project. So we can turn off that subcategory entirely if we want to or change its color, its pen weights and so forth. So we'll say OK. And I'm going to do this as a sweep so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my line work um, that I'm going to have the sweep follow. So we're going to do this from the reference level for one of them and from the left or right side and then additionally from the front. So we'll go ahead and create our line work. So we'll do model lines. Now the other benefit to this is this could be our course representation. So we can turn off the modeled elements and just have the line work show up in course and then in you know, medium and fine, we'll turn off this and turn on the extruded portion. So we'll go ahead and draw our line work. And I want to make sure that I set my work plane. So let's set the work plane to that reference plane that I just created. So now I know it's going to be drawn in the right location. So let's go ahead and go back to draw our lines make sure that you specify the subcategory and then we also want to make sure that we snap to intersections and the reason I'm getting this warning is because these lines are actually being drawn above my work plane and we might be able to bounce this down um, by changing our sill elevation so we'll change it to six inches and now I can see my lines 
So that's the reason we're getting that. It's not a big deal, but just kind of a heads up on why it's occurring. So we'll also do this from the left side, left or right. We'll draw our lines again along these reference planes. And it should remain on the one you used last, so we shouldn't have to go in and modify that. And let's go here. And let's go ahead and move that up so we make sure we have this in the right location. Oops. And I had changed my unit, so when I typed in 1, it was 1 inch. So let's change that to 12. Just make sure everybody's working the way they should. Okay, so if I look at this in 3D, and let's go to the, the right side here. So you can see all of those lines in my model. And then we'll go ahead and go to, well, let's go to the reference level. And let's also give this reference plane a name. So we'll call it Grill Face. And then we're going to go back to our exterior side, and we're going to set that as our work plane. And then we're going to draw, basically our diamond is what we're going to draw in here, so I'm just going to drag these down. It should snap to it anyways, um, but that's kind of dependent on what your snap settings are. So we'll go back and finish with our model lines. And again, you always want to go to intersections, and SI is the shortcut key for that. And let's take a look in 3D again. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim out those parts in the center. So we're going to split the line and then we'll just trim it. And same thing all the way around. Okay, so that's the next portion, so I will stop the video here and we'll continue after that. This is video number four and probably our final video for this um, family. We're going to do a couple more things before we do the sweep and that is that we're going to change all of our um, lines basically to only be visible in coarse elevation. And you'll notice it's not showing up up here. And the reason it's not is these things are on different work planes. So I'm going to get rid of these because they're on a different work plane. And you'll notice now I have my access to my visibility settings. So we'll tell it where we want it visible. So I really probably don't need it visible in plan, but that's up to you guys. And then I only want to see these in course. Okay, we'll do the same thing for the other ones. grab these and get rid of these and change our visibility settings same way and then we'll do the ones in the center so they don't actually turn off in here they just kind of look a little bit different I guess is a good way to say it so you notice they got thicker and gray so um, now what we're gonna do is we are going to create our sweep and we're going to have to do this in three, three stages, basically. So we're going to create a sweep. And we're going to pick the path, which is why we drew these lines. And I had created a profile. So I'm going to use the profile that I created. So it'll automatically follow the path. You'll notice you have some controls over it up here, but mine I drew knowing where the base point was going to be and it would work out properly. So let's go ahead and finish. And we want to make sure this is on the same subcategory, so make sure you switch it to grill. And we probably do want to assign a parameter for material, even though it's probably always going to be black, but just in case, um, we'll add a parameter for that. And then we'll go ahead and create the rest of our sweeps. 
So same process. And we will pick the path. And finish. Oops, my bad. Let's take this one off. My path can't split like that, so let's finish the path. And then same thing with the profile and finish. So I'm going to pause for a minute and finish doing this, and you guys can do the same. And then once I have them created, we'll come back and finish this up. Okay, so I have all my sweeps done. We want to do a few more things before we take this into a test project to try and break it, basically. Um, we're going to grab all of these and change their visibility settings. So let's go ahead and filter. And it's all under grill because it's assigned to that subcategory. And since these are all sweeps, I can do this this way. Um, again, kind of a judgment call on where you want to see these. But I only want to see it in medium and fine. So let's set it that way. And before we take it into a project, like I said, we're going to flex it and see if it breaks in here. Because if it does, we have to fix it here first. So we'll go ahead and flex these dimensions. And it doesn't matter what you change them to. And let's go ahead and change our sill height to something else. And we'll change the offset to something else as well. Okay, so everything looks good. We'll go ahead and save again. And I've left the opening in here. Um, if this is going to go over a window, then you would want to remove the opening. So just delete it. It's not going to affect how you know this positions itself, but in case you wanted to use this as just a decorative opening with a grill, you know you have that flexibility as well. So I'm going to start a new project based off the architectural template. This is wall-based, so I have to have a wall. And since we built this with the window tool, when I load this in here, I have to use the window component, you know, to place it. So let's um, close hidden windows. We'll switch back to our grill, load it into the project, and then just place it. And since I had turned off everything in plan view, that's why we're not seeing anything. So take a look at 3D, and then we want to make sure that we can flex it. Um, and this is type based. So I need to duplicate for the different sizes, but I didn't do that in our family yet. So we'll go ahead and change this to 48 inches and 3 feet and, I don't know, 8 inches. And just make sure that it doesn't break. So there you go. One final thing that I wanted to cover is creating the family types um, within the family itself. I had mentioned that when we were testing it in the model, but we can do that through our family types and we'll add a new one. This is type-based information and the sizes that I see here is basically the window size, so the window opening size, not the overall size of the grill. So we'll just name these based on what the window size is. So window um, is 36 inches by 48 inches. And then we'll create another one. I don't know. Um, 48 inches by 60 inches. I wouldn't create too many um, because we can kind of do this on the fly once we're in the project. But you'll want to make sure that these values match whatever you, you know, indicated in the name. So 48, and just make sure it flexes, and there you go.